And then we're going to Facebook. Let me just start that. And if you're making your way in from the Juice Guru Academy, we're going to have you uh, join us behind the stage here. We're just getting ready to go live on Facebook, and then we'll be recording the interview. So um, give you guys a couple of minutes to get in here, and I'm going to see how we're doing with this Facebook. Live. There we go. And we're going live on Facebook starting now. Let's see. Great. We actually are on Facebook and hello to the Juice Guru community. I'm here with Susan Poisner. Hi, Susan. Hello. Where, where are you hanging out with us today? I'm in Toronto, Canada. Very nice. What's the weather like out there? It's actually lovely and warm. We've been getting cooler nights now. You know, the autumn is coming, but it's, it's a beautiful day today. Thank you. Sounds, sounds similar to what we've got going on here in Redondo Beach, California. Uh, nice and mild. I see a few of you have made it into backstage with us. So if you're part of the Juice Guru community, uh, or the Academy rather, you can actually ask questions at the end. We've got a Q&A and um, a chat room where you can type in. So if you want to type in, say hello, let us know where you're hanging out. Just go ahead and type it in and I'll, uh, and we'll give you a shout out. And, and as always, you can come on video too. At the end of the interview, we can bring you on and you can ask our awesome guests, um, uh, any question you might want. Today we've got Susan Poisner and you'll have an opportunity to, to be part of the production. So that's part of being behind the scenes with us. And hello to Gwen and Laura. I see you guys are hanging out with us and I'm going to get ready to take a look on Facebook real quick just to see if there's any comments or if we're just coming in well there. And then we're going to get ready and record this over onto iHeartRadio. So let me take a look in the Juice Guru community here and make sure... We're not going to get any, um, oh, yep. Okay. I see we're going out there live and we're good to go. If you're hanging out on Facebook, go ahead and type in below where you're hanging out. We'd love to hear. Like I said, I'm here in Redondo Beach, California, just outside Los Angeles and Susan's in Toronto, Canada. And if you're in the chat room, go ahead and type in there too. Can you guys hear us? And let me know, are we coming in okay? Test one, two, three. How about a test from you, Susan? Make sure everyone can hear us. It's not distorted or anything like that. Hi, folks. I would love to know if you can hear me, and I would love to know if you have fruit trees. So <laughs> tell us. Yeah, I'd like to know that. Anybody have fruit trees out there? And if not, are you interested in growing your own fruit trees? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. So go ahead and type in. I want to make sure we're, we're going out live. Let me take a look on Facebook here. Um, let me take a look. Oh, somebody, I've got a message from Laura. Um, I have a lot of fruit trees. Wow, Laura, where are you? Tell me. Are you in California? Oh, Washington. Awesome. awesome. Oh, great. Oh, wow, that's great. All right, well, Laura, hopefully you'll hop on at the end if you want to join us at the end if you have a question or two. Um, but we're getting ready to get started right now. I'm going to go ahead and and I see in Facebook people are telling me they're hanging out all over the world too. So thank you guys for stopping in and here we go we're going to get ready and record for radio and get going with this interview so thank you for all being here thanks for taking the time out of your busy day this is going to be amazing and let's start now this episode of juice guru radio is brought to you by try best making healthy living easy and our new book juice guru transform your life adding one juice a day 
Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to another edition of Juice Crew Radio. I'm your host, Steve Prusak. It's great to be with you on today's show. We've got Susan Poisner. She's an award-winning writer, filmmaker, and urban orchardist based in Toronto, Canada. She's going to tell us all about growing fruit trees, how to care for them no matter where you're living, the benefits of this. I mean, what we should be growing our own food. So sit back, relax, have yourself a juice, some water, tea. We'll be back right after this with Susan Poisner. Hello and welcome back to Juice Crew Radio. I'm your host, Steve Prusak. We've got Susan Poisner with us. She's the author of Growing Urban Orchards, How to Care for Fruit Trees in the City and Beyond, and teaches fruit tree care skills online. We're going to hear all about that, about her radio show. She's got Urban Forestry Radio Show and Podcast, which talks about fruit trees, uh, permaculture, and a lot more. Let's look at the show right now, Susan Poisner. Hi there. Well, Susan, thank you. Congratulations on the release of your new book. Thank you very much. So tell me, how did you, um, you know, get into all this? How did this become such a passion for you? Oh, my goodness. As always, the stories start with like, it's a bit of an accident. I don't know how it happened. Um, I was uh, very interested in gardening and growing vegetables. And um, I just thought, you know, there's this big movement for growing uh, community gardens. And how easy would it be to just plant a few fruit trees around those gardens? And, you know, fruit trees are easy, thought I, <laughs> in my naive days way back when. Um, so in the end, I started a project to plant a community orchard in my local park. So it was an interesting um, progression as to how it happened. We had some challenges. We had some members of the community that didn't want an orchard in our local park. Um, but in the end, we got our fruit trees and we planted them. So here's the problem. The problem is that because there was some opposition, I had to do this absolutely perfectly. Like I could make no mistakes because there were people who were really afraid it was going to be a messy disaster. And I think probably your listeners know that fruit trees, if they are neglected, can be a bit of a messy disaster. So in the end, I had to, over the years, learn how to care for fruit trees and even though I was a gardener with lots of experience, there was a lot to learn. So that started me on this journey, and it started me writing the book. So, I mean, we can say uh, growing, taking care of fruit trees is really a skill uh, that not all of us have. So you're, is your part of your mission to show us how we can actually grow our own fruit trees and take care of them? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's funny because people come up to me and they say, you know... I would love to plant a fruit tree. I would love to plant a community orchard. And I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. Only if you're willing to learn how to care for them. Because um, what happens is when a fruit tree is neglected, they're sort of like um, kids in kindergarten, right? One tree gets sick, they all get sick. And there are these interesting creatures because fruit trees are usually made up of two trees, right? You've got your rootstock, you've got your, your scion, the top part of the tree with the branches and the fruit and everything. And so it needs a lot of care, hands-on care. So that would be correct annual pruning from the very first day you plant your tree. Wow, first day. Um, fertility management, you need to feed your trees every year and you need to know how to look at them and say, has, does this tree have enough nutrition? You can actually look at a tree and find out. And then of course, pest and disease prevention is really key because we want our fruit trees to have a positive experience, beautiful, healthy, delicious fruit, not so that it produces fruit that nobody wants to eat and that it looks kind of sad and lonely that nobody loves it. <laughs> Great thing. So I guess initially the things to consider how about our climate where we're living on the planet? How, how do we decide what kind of fruit trees we might want to grow? Well, it's one of, you mentioned earlier that I teach an online workshop. And the biggest chunk of the workshop is how to choose your fruit tree. And you think, okay, you go to the garden center and you pick a fruit tree, right? Bad start. <laughs> Not a good idea. Because what happens is your mm -hmm. garden center will carry fruit trees that are popular, I don't know in California if you have this, uh, but for instance, honey crisp apples. Do you guys have honey crisp over there? Yeah, oh yeah, we do. So they're super popular. So in the garden center, they feature, they'll get, you can buy a honey crisp apple tree for sure. They don't tell you it is amongst the hardest 
apple tree to grow. Like it is so hard to grow successfully. It is so hard to have delicious fruit from that tree. So in my first part of the workshop, which is about in about two hours, I teach you how to select a tree that will be good for your climate, how to select a tree that will be resistant to the disease problems in your community and pollination issues and harvest issues. So all these things you go through. So yes, there's lots to learn. And yes, it is absolutely essential to get a tree that will thrive in your own backyard, in your unique conditions. Right, no matter where, because I mean, if we're talking about living in the city, that might be a challenge. We might not have a lot of space in our backyard and you help to uh, you know, overcome some of those issues too? Oh, absolutely. So I think that should stop no one uh, from planting fruit trees. So for instance, if you live in an apartment building, um, you, perhaps you have a local park nearby and perhaps you can work on a project. These community orchard projects, like any community garden project, they're amazing because not only are you learning and working hands-on with nature, but you're building community. I have made so many beautiful, beautiful friends out of this experience. We've been through ups and downs. We've had our challenges and you really, you, you learn from people and you also learn from your trees. So I hope that that stops nobody from planting a fruit tree. You live in an apartment, find a project or, or start one yourself. And what about the idea of growing it in a pot, say on our balcony or that kind of thing? Does it get to a point where it gets too big and we've got to replant it? You know what? It can be done. Um, definitely. I, you know, for instance, here I had for a while a lemon tree and in Toronto, we can't plant those outside. So I was playing around with that. And yes, you can have a small tree on a dwarf rootstock in your back, you know, small backyard or on a patio. Um, but you just have to make sure, again, that you're caring for it properly, you're pruning it at the right time of year so it doesn't grow too big, you're feeding it, and it's the same thing. Everything applies. What are some of the skills we need to learn to, uh, to have the most success growing our fruit trees? So I would say, you know, I would see, I see it as a map. I see five things, right? Five things. Um, so you have to know how to choose a fruit tree. You have to, the biggest opportunity you have to have a successful fruit tree or a successful orchard is to pick the right trees. So learn how to choose your tree, learn how to prune it annually, um, nutrition and fertility management, pest and disease prevention, and there's something else that I forgot. Oh, young tree care. Young trees need different care than older trees. So you need to be sensitive to that. So I would say there's five things you need to learn. And my suggestion when people say, I'm going to start a community orchard or I want to plant a fruit tree is like, okay, great. Get the big picture. And then you can make, you can make a start. Because I'll tell you what happened. What happened with me is that I didn't do that. I just wanted to plant fruit trees in my local park. And I've picked up some fruit trees and made all the mistakes that nobody else ever has to make again, because I tell mm. everybody about it in my book. <laughs> you don't have to do that. So yeah, that's my goal is really to, to help people do it successfully. So it's a positive experience. What about if I want to grow some for juicing and I'd like to go organic, what about the organic route and how do we deal with pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, things like that? Um, if we want to keep that out of the, out of the mix. Really good question um, and really important. So um, I only grow fruit trees organically. That's what I do. That's what I had to learn. So I can't, for instance, um, I don't know if any of the listeners have had this experience that they've had pear trees or apple trees and all of a sudden there's these sort of rust color spots on the leaves. Um, so essentially, um, it's called pear rust, or it, it's basically the pear version is pear rust. And we had it on our trees. And I called uh, one of my mentors who was not an organic orchardist. And I showed him a picture of this rust thing. And I said, what is this? And he said, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Because his way of doing things at that time was to spray the trees to prevent any of these problems, even while your tree is healthy. So you're right, it is in some ways easier to grow non-organically, except then you have to use all these toxic sprays, you'll breathe them in, your children, your pets and everything. 
there are still sprays that you can and in some cases should use to protect your trees that are organic. And again, those are skills that you just need to learn and there's not a lot of them. So hopefully if you're doing everything right, you maybe spray your trees once a year or, or, and that's it. What kind of abundance have you enjoyed from your trees? What kind of fruits are you, uh, you know, eating throughout the year as a result of, of this awesome hobby? Oh my goodness, abundance. Well, that's interesting because when you plant a fruit tree for the first couple of years, you actually remove all the baby fruit. That's what you do. So every little baby piece of fruit you take off the tree so that your tree can put all its energy into expanding its root system. So the first couple of years we're waiting and waiting and waiting for the fruit. And then we start to get fruit. And so what do we have? We have cherries, we have apples, we have Asian pears. We have apricots, which we love. Um, we have some other, um, what's it called? Oh, the little berries, June berries. Um, so we have a wide selection of fruits. So the next year we had our um, cherries started to fruit. We got a taste. But then all the cherries, we were planning our harvest day and all the cherries disappeared off the tree overnight. So I think it was a Thursday, I went to the park, I was checking things out and we were planning for a Saturday stewardship day with a harvest and Friday, no fruit, not one piece. And it happened two years in a row where the cherry trees were totally ripped off <laughs> overnight. So now you talk about abundance. We have actually nominated somebody to be our chief fruit patroller in the orchard. And it's half a joke, only partially a joke because she walks her dog a lot and she keeps an eye on things. Um, we have had eyewitness accounts of, of people who have raided the trees. And the point of a community orchard is that um, everybody should be able to have a taste, but it's not like one person should come in with three bags, fill them up and take all the stuff away. So there have been some you know, noted people who noticed and confrontations around taking all the fruit. But this year we did get abundance because we were really, really watching very carefully. We didn't wait for the weekend to do harvesting. So we got beautiful cherries this year. We picked the high up cherries and left the lower ones for the community to take a handful as they walk through the park. We've had apricots. And sadly, we missed out on some amazing apples. For whatever reason, I wasn't in the orchard for a couple of weeks. The apples ripened. Somebody else figured it out before we did. And they were fabulous apples that I can't wait to try. But anyways, <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so we have, it's a mixed bag when you're, when you're growing in a public space. What, what variety of apples were, were they? Um, I think they were the... Um, Oh my good, they weren't liberty, they weren't freedom. I want to call them prima, but that's not the word. Oh my goodness, I forgot the name. It's an early apple. It's an early August apple. And if it comes to me, I'll tell you. You're listening to Susan Poisner right here on Juice Guru Radio. She's the author of Growing Urban Orchards, How to Care for Fruit Trees in the City and Beyond. And we're going to hear all about that and what led to the book and uh, how you can find out more, how you can, you know, start growing your own fruit trees in your community or backyard. So, Susan, what led to the writing of this book? So, essentially, I had learned myself the hard way by making mistakes how to care for fruit trees. But I am a journalist by profession, I'm a filmmaker. And I think in a way it was partly me wanting to write about this experience, but also partly me wanting to remember how to care for fruit trees. I needed a guide. And I had gone to the library, I read a lot of books, I've got all these books on fruit trees, and I couldn't find one book that just made it easy. So my goal in the book, is to, to find out what is the minimum that I have to do in order to keep my fruit trees healthy? What is the minimum? I don't have time to go online and figure out some really complicated videos that you can get, like it's really scientific or some are just not accurate and some are terrific, but how do I know if they're terrific, you know? So as I did my research, I spoke to experts. I visited orchards across North America and learned from community orchardists and regular orchardists, and I wrote it down. So I wrote down everything. I created this book uh, that I'm very proud of. And the book weaves the story of our community orchard together with lessons in fruit tree care. So it's a really easy read. And it's something that you can just refer to over the years. 
So yeah, that's how it started. And the other thing that happened in those early years, sorry, I've got a fly, a fruit fly actually, flying around here. In the early years, um, people started to hear about Ben Nobleman Park Community Orchard, which is our orchard. This park was like a nothing little park nobody ever knew about. And they were going to the parks, forestry and recreation people saying, we want to be like Ben Nobleman. We want to plant fruit trees. So people were starting to come to me for advice and assistance. So the book was there to help. And I also created in-person workshops and eventually online workshops to teach people everything that I know. Yeah, the website is orchardpeople.com. We'll have a link up at juicegururadio.com for that. And the book is available at bookstores worldwide, amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and, and all the usual suspects, I suppose. Right, Susan? Well, yes, now it's being uh, distributed. Around. Originally, it was just sort of local. And so now, yes, you can hopefully get it wherever you are. So, uh, and then, so this led to really expanding your passion into, I know you're teaching online courses and you've got your podcast and radio show. Let's hear more about that. Oh, the podcast is so fun. As you know, podcasts and radio shows are amazing. Why? Because you get to meet and talk to and ask your questions to the best people in the whole world. It is so much fun. Um, you know, I have constantly more and more questions as I become more advanced in my own fruit tree care skills. But I have questions. I never do anything just because people tell me to do it. I have to understand why am I doing this thing? Why do I have to prune my fruit tree once a year? Or why should I prune sometimes in the summer and sometimes in the winter? I need to know the science. So on my radio show, I get these fantastic scientists and authors and all sorts of people to talk to me about every aspect of fruit tree care. And we have lots of fun. It goes out live on an internet radio station that you can hear wherever you are called Reality Radio 101. It's on the last Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern. And so what happens is people tune in and they email in their questions and we have fabulous questions from all over the place. We even had one show about pawpaw trees, not papayas, pawpaws, and we had an email in from Italy. This woman in Italy wanted to, had to question and I'm like, wow, do you guys even have pawpaws in Italy? I didn't even know that. So I get to meet amazing people. And it's also this feeling like you have, this feeling of community, of like-minded people. We all want to learn more. We all want to live sustainably, eat beautiful, nutritious, and healthy food. Beautiful. And, and so then that led to online courses too, where we can actually learn how to uh, tend our gardens better? Yeah. And again, it's because in the beginning, I actually had a lot of trouble finding teachers. And I live in Toronto. Toronto's a big city. There's got to be people who know how to grow fruit trees. But at that time, uh, people were still allowed to grow with chemicals in their backyard, you know, like toxic chemicals. And so a lot of the people who knew fruit trees didn't know organic. So I thought, I don't ever want anybody ever to be stuck in a situation where I had to pay hundreds of dollars to get experts to come in from a, like two hours away to teach us. So I wanted to have something available where all the things that I have learned I can offer to others through storytelling to make it fun, you know, but also giving them the concrete lessons that they need. So on my website at orchardpeople.com slash workshops, you can see the content, of course, but you can also um, see what, who takes the course. I have master gardeners taking the course, arborists, because arborists are awesome, but they never learn fruit tree care, which is a totally different animal than just caring for native trees. I mean, that's a lot of work, oh my gosh, or ornamentals. But fruit trees, uh, arborists don't often like fruit trees. Oh my goodness, I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> I'm going to figure out how to hang up on that. I should have, okay, there we go. That's okay. I don't know what's good. Okay. Anyways, so, um, so yes, yeah, so I basically, uh, it's an eight hour course that people mm -hmm. can do online, wherever they are. And I have students from all over, um, all over North America. Well, we, you can take a look at that. And again, you gave the website, it's, uh, it, but we can get there from orchardpeople.com too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And your plans for the future, um, where you're taking all this and your goals for the next, you know, few years, what, what, what do you have uh, coming? Well, you had asked earlier about, you know, growing fruit trees in smaller backyards. 
And I have a passion I'm experimenting with in my own backyard, espalier fruit trees. So that's when your, um, the, your fruit trees, you grow them up against a fence, they're two dimensional. Um, so even the tiniest, uh, even a small backyard, if you have full sun, you could grow a number of different varieties, just each tree is very small. So, um, <laughs> So I want to do some more. I've got my beginner program online. Now the beginner program is suitable for master gardeners. So it's beginner, but not, but it's good for anybody, home growers and whatever. I'd like to create an intermediate level with espalier pruning, with um, integrated pest management, so a little bit more advanced um, pest and disease information um, and uh, leaf diagnosis, how to look at the leaves of your tree and understand what's going on with it. So that's my goal. And I do have another book up my sleeve that I'm hoping to write. Oh, great. Congratulations. And again, um, I, I was going to actually give you an opportunity. If you're in the Juice Crew Academy, uh, behind the stage with us here, we're like behind the scenes, you can type in your questions or you can raise your hand if you want to come on video and, and join us live here during this um, intimate gathering. So just raise your hand if you want to come on. And if, and if you're not part of Juice Crew Academy, you can find out more about that at juicecrewacademy.com. I see Laura had actually made some questions there, so I posted some questions there. I'm trying to figure out, oh good, I can look at them. Hi Laura. Um, uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh. Rushing to leave, watering and listening, maybe as we head out packing my wheatgrass and juice or two. <laughs> but well, she, she's the one. She grows a lot. She's in Washington. She grows peaches, apples, cherries, Asian pears, apricots, figs, and persimmons. Very nice. And then with that say the bottom, she loves her sixth variety of apples there. And she has lemon and lime too. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. And she's yeah. got a spalier. So Laura, I'm very jealous because you have a lot of space and you've got a climate where I can't grow the lemon and lime. So. <laughs> and she says all organic. So any other questions before we close out, go ahead and type them in or if you want to come on live. But um, mm. anything else, Laura, that you wanted to share? Oh, Laura, see, she's got me off track here already. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Susan, anything else you wanted to share with our listeners that we didn't cover during the interview or any final messages or advice on how we can you know, make this into our own passion or hobby. Absolutely. So um, I just wanted, there was, I'm going to relate that to this question that we got here um, from Cheryl. Does your book also help people manage their existing fruit trees, even if they're not the perfect tree for the environment? And so I guess that's what I, uh, one of the things I'd like to say, and thank you for that question. Yes all trees need care. And sometimes we inherit a tree that somebody else chose or we didn't know and whatever, you can still take really good care of the tree. It may take longer, you may not get the perfect shape. But here's what I would leave you with, I suppose. Fruit trees, you guys are, you know, you're juicing all the time. And we realize how much nutrition and what a gift fruit trees give us. Like they are so generous with us. And so I kind of feel like it's a two-way street. Can we be generous with those trees? Can we give to the trees with hands-on care? One thing that, you know, I find sad is when people plant a tree and they say, gimme, 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 I want my fruit. And they just don't care and the tree goes into decline. So I would say that let's look at things as a partnership. You know, these trees feed us, what can we do? for those trees, whether it's in your backyard or in your neighborhood, or even just gratitude to appreciate where our fruit comes from. Very nice sentiment. And I see another question came in here from Laura. Um, let me see here. We had a thank you from Cheryl. First year of peaches and they get uh, some kind of worm in them. Any ideas on that? First, that's your first year on that peach First tree. year. So yeah, the idea. <laughs> So with pest and disease, you have to think about it in advance because these little insects get in when the fruit is like really tiny. So um, for instance, with apples, I think it would work with peaches too. Now I don't grow peaches, they don't grow well in my particular climate, but the rules are pretty much the same. And that is you need to protect the fruit when it's really small to stop the insects from laying their eggs under the skin. So I use something called orchard socks. They're little sockets that you slip on top of the fruit, you tie up and the fruit will grow, grow, grow. And these little nylons grow with them. But these nylons prevent the insects from laying their eggs under the skin. 
So you may want to do a little research on some sort of like, like orchard socks or some other protective mechanism you can use when that fruit is really small. You're listening to Juice Guru Radio. We're closing out our session here with Susan Poisoner. Susan, thank you so much for joining us, being on the show today. And uh, best of luck with the launch of the new book over there with Robert Rose Publishing. Isn't that right? Um, I'm not sure that that's the name of the publisher, actually. It's Book Publishing Company. Is okay. The one. It's kind of, yeah, it's a distribution thing. It's a little confusing. But Book Publishing Company. And if people Google Growing Urban Orchards, it's for sure on Amazon, so they can find it. And again, the website, orchardpeople.com. We'll have the link at juicegururadio.com. Susan, thank you so much. Congratulations on your work. And uh, we'll be keeping an eye. I might enroll in your course myself because I want, I want to grow some fruit trees here and put them in my juicer. Oh, awesome. Don't put the trees in your juicer. Only the fruit, okay? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good tip. Uh, that's Susan Poison right here on Juice Guru Radio. I'm your host, Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. And thank you guys in the academy, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, putting in questions. If there's any last-minute questions before we uh, – close out the session. We'll go ahead and give you a chance to write them in here, or you can join us on video if you like. And if not, we're going to get back to our day. And thank you for being here. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. And thank you all for, for joining in. Susan, thank you again for being here. I'm not seeing, uh, let's see, will the socks keep the deer off? Diane wanted to know. Uh, it's, will they keep the deer off? Probably not, because by the way, the deer, they like the branches, not, well, they like the fruit too. So Deer, I've done a radio show on fruit trees and deer, so you can find it again on orchardpeople.com. You'll get the podcast. Yeah, how long have you been doing the show? Do you, you have a bunch of episodes up there? Yes, I have 24 episodes in the bag, one a month. It's just, I've been plodding along doing it, and it's magical. It's like there are more and more listeners, live listeners every month. Um, there are more and more thousands of downloads. I don't know who's listening, but I'm so happy they're out there. Congratulations. And they're, they're contributing, like, like your, your wonderful listeners are contributing to the conversation. Always fun. Susan, thank you again for being here. We're going to uh, end now, and I'll send you a link uh, when we get the show up, and you can share with your audience. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Steve. Thanks. Take care. Nice Bye. meeting you.